you know, I can't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what? That sounded pretty good to me. Uh, but and, and some did, of your it did, it was it did actually, it was pretty good. Don't ask and, me to do it. And we again. recorded it, we recorded it so I can get <laughs> you the sample. We have it. We have it. <laughs> yeah! Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. Every time Arjen Lukasen uh, releases a new album, doesn't really matter if it's under the name of Arian or if it's under one of his many other projects, uh, it's always a big deal. Uh, Arian always brings together, you know, the best in metal to create absolute prog metal masterworks. It's no different this time with the new Star One album Revel in Time. So I had to call up Arian uh, and discuss the album, the Beatles and so much more. Arian, thank you so much for your time today. This is an extremely exciting week. I know it's a very busy week for you as well because you are being bombarded with questions for interviews and so on. But then, hey, you are releasing an album about that deals that talks about basically movies or inspired by movies that deal with time, time manipulation, time travel, time loops. And look at this. I get to interview you on Groundhog Day. Isn't that is it Groundhog Day? Really? It is Groundhog Day. <laughs> thousand people freezing their butts off waiting to worship a rat I w there's so much that i want to dig in uh, uh uh about this record and about everything that's going on obviously with yourself first i have to ask you have you as one of the biggest beatles fans of all time have you already watched the get back documentary i'm trying to get through it it's, it's a long painful one. it's it's also painful you know them sitting in the studio and just playing covers and it's not my favorite Beatles period, you know, the whole yeah. uh, let it be thing. I mean, I love Abbey Road. I love the White Album, but yeah. the highlight for me is with George Martin, you know, doing doing I'm the Walrus and Strawberry Fields and stuff like that. Yeah. And then yeah. so it's not my favorite, but but I'm I, I watch like 10, 10 minutes a day and then and then it's OK. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's going to keep you going because it's a lot of content. It's, it's a it's, lot. It's... Yeah. But, you know, poor George, you know, then I'm listening to George and Yoko is just sitting there, and, you know, and Paul McCartney is, of course, being Paul McCartney. I, 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 yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll persevere. Yeah, yeah. OK, awesome. Awesome. Now, uh, to talk about the Beatles, I know that you've mentioned before that obviously people that know you know that you're a big Beatles fan. That's no surprise. Um, uh, you've also shared before that within the Beatles, you know, like for you, the icon is definitely John Lennon, even though you then always add, you know, he's never he's never the most technical at what he does. Other people no, have been more technical. No, no. For me, it's not about the technique. It's about the sound of the voice. Yeah. Because there's like there's singers who have amazing technique, uh, but I just don't like the sound of the voice. Yeah, and yeah. then you know, then it's over. So basically, I ask people uh, uh, like both. You know, I have to like the sound of the voice, and they have to have technique. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, sometimes, you know, I work with with uh, non-singers, as they call it. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. People, maybe a lot of people who were growlers first, like like. Uh, 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 John Edlund, John Edlund from Tia Mott or, or Mikael Akerfeld or yeah, Dan yeah. Swaino, you know, who are not like the typical Ronnie James Dio singers, but I just right, like the right. sound of the voice. And that's it. Paul McCartney is like a way better singer than, than John Lennon, but the sound of the voice, man, of John Lennon. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. when he, when he only when he talks already, you know, with that Liverpool accent, it's, uh, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, uh, when I do uh, a metal album like this, then I need really good singers, also right. technical, you know, because it's high parts, it's often that high B, yeah. and they, you know, they have to... They so would be overpowered Star by the music otherwise, for sure. Yeah. True, true, for Star One it's a different story, but Ariel and I often have like, as you call it, non-singers. Right, right, right. And I know about non-singers because I am one. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. totally a non-singer, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I make I make the best of it, but I can't do the, you know, I can't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what? That sounded pretty good to me. Uh, but and, and some did, of your it did. It was it did actually. It was pretty good. Don't ask and, me to do it. And we it recorded again. it. We recorded it so I can get we you the sample. We have it. We have it. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, I, I do have one, a little bit of a disappointment here because last time we spoke, you told me that Michael Mills would play a banana if you'd ask him to. <laughs> and there is no song about bananas on this record, but it's, Mike it's, Mills is on it. It's Mike's mistake because I asked him to write the lyrics for Prezient. I said, man, I can't, and it has to be about a banana. But he didn't do it, you know, he wrote it about a, a movie. Yeah, yeah. And we couldn't find a, a time travel movie that involved bananas, so... Yeah, next time. It's a shame. Next time. It's a shame. It's a shame. I know one of the questions that you are asked all the time, so I won't ask that question, is, you know, oh, who's, you know, who's that artist that you want to work with, uh, that you mm -hmm. haven't worked with yet? I know you have to answer that over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, I actually wanted to ask the inverse of that, because you are a very well-respected musician or, or music composer, um, uh, project leader. Um, does it happen that people are like very proactively trying to, to be one of your singers and you're like, Stay oh away. yeah, 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 every day. Yeah. Every day. Uh, and I'm spoiled bastard, you know. Yeah, I mean, I work with the best. I work with Britney, I work with Russell, I work with Jorn, yeah. I, I, I work with the best. So if someone sends me like a, like a recording of himself, like, a, yeah, I love, I love Russell Allen. And, and even if they just sing the same song, you know, right. it's not Russell Allen. And, and so my standards are really high. So oh, yeah. I would say 99% of what I hear or what people send to me uh, is just, you know, it, it's good. Yeah. But for me to be to say like, OK, I want to work with this person, it has to be even better or equal. Right, good. right, right, right. For sure. So, yeah, it happens all the time. For me, I discovered as a as a teenager, uh, Arian, uh, with the uh, the double Universal Migrator albums, this Star One album, I had a chance to listen to the, to the album um, already. Um, it brings me back to those releases and and, and, and that's good definitely also because where in some al uh, albums that you've done where you have 12 singers in one song the focus here is more again on you know single singers if you will there are right you know right. there's sometimes multiple people working together but there's always like that main singer of a song like universal migrated yeah and that and that brought me back to that um cool, cool. It, it, what, do do you do you get inspired by your own back catalog like would you say like oh yeah this 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 reminds you also of previous work or or are you trying to separate yourself completely from them uh I, I, yeah i try to separate it definitely i i try of course i try very hard not to repeat myself but i get old and i do yeah. you know and i don't notice it i mean it's often fans saying like hey that riff is you know you already did on that album and yeah. I'm like, no, I didn't. And then I listen and then I'm like, I did. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so the danger of listening to my own back catalog would be that I start stealing from myself. But uh, I have to say, if I listen to my old stuff, it sounds arrogant, but I'm really proud of it. You know? <laughs> yes, you can be anywhere that you want to be. See everything that you want to see. Sure. But it also gives me an uncomfortable feeling because I'm like, oh my God, you know, when I hear Donovan Souls or, or Black Hole or Druids, it's, it's like, oh, can I ever write something like that again, you know? Yeah. So the feeling of proudness quickly goes into the feeling of insecurity, like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, listening to, to old shit is, is, is dangerous, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you said it yourself on one of those songs, where you sing yourself that I really, it's one of my favorite songs in your, your back catalog, very different than what you usually do. Um, you say yourself, every song has been sung before. Yeah, yeah, it's right. been played in <laughs> yeah, uh, Pink totally. Beatles in a Purple Zeppelin. Is that because uh, there are always elements and certain sounds, maybe not melodies or riffs, but sounds that come back in, in every album that you work on uh, yeah. and, and you're afraid of repeating yourself. There's also just sounds that are very popular with people. And does it sometimes surprise you that when you look at the vast catalog that you have, there are certain songs that become your hits, if you will. 
uh, given that most of your albums are concept albums and it's a part, every mm -hmm. song is part of a story, but you have songs like Loser, like Computer Ice, like I the know, it's turned I know. to stone that just it, I don't so much get more it. popular. You don't get it's, it? It's no, it's such a coincidence that you asked because this morning I was in the shower thinking about that because somebody sent me, I don't have Spotify, send me Spotify. Yeah. He said, "Do you know what the what the favorite the top are? things are?" Yeah, yeah, and indeed, "Loser" is is the first, and "Computer Eyes" and Comatose. "Everybody Dies." Everybody dies, and "Comatose" is like, really? Yeah. Not that I don't like it, but I uh, I mean, "Loser" I can understand it, like down, down, okay, don't you know? It's this big yeah. uh, song that you just can't overlook it. But yeah, "Comatose" well, or with or, "Comatose," uh, my personal take on that is, and I and and I'm going to. You know give your ego a boost here but um comatose is my favorite song sung by yorn ever like they like just the, it's, the yeah warmth, it's, it's the it's warmth the, in his the, voice in that voice the coverdale that side <laughs> yeah come on give us some coverdale uh. yeah <laughs> So when you and your team are working on that, um, you've done some one-off shows and special shows. You've headlined Grass Pop at one point. You've done the special shows in Tilbury. Um, mm -hmm. Like, how then do you go about building a set list for that? Is that with a lot of input from other people, or or is it Good the Ari uh, Arian's it's, it's, favorites? It's hundred percent me that picks them. Um, <clears throat> I make a combination. I make what are my favorite songs and what do I think are the fans' favorite songs. And I make a combination of those. Plus, the third factor is, will it work live? Mm -hmm. You know, some songs like, a song like The Truth Is In Here, is, which I right. sing, you know, is, is uh, for some reason, people love it. <laughs> and But it would not be a live song, you know? Right. If you do, da 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 do, 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 you know, it's this typical life song or intergalactic yeah, yeah. space crusader. So, yeah, it, it's what would go down live, what go, would go down well with the fans, uh, what would the fans like to hear, because, you know, you want to please the fans that come, you know, you, and what are my own perfect, uh, uh, personal favorite songs. But I think that's the least factor. What are my favorite, my own personal yeah. favorite song? Because it doesn't matter so much. One thing that as I, 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 I've wondered about, because um, I mean, you've obviously introduced some ASCII code in your back catalog where you use zeros and ones instead of text um, because it fits the story really well. Um, you're a writer of stories, sci-fi fantasy, basically. Um, we've seen some, you know, writers, authors uh, do that by also for different, because you touch on different uh, well, not even just races, but but different kinds of being, if you will, and um, and so on. Um, there's people that have played with language also and and created their own languages. I know that you you are in essence quite interested in different languages. I know that you speak multiple languages yourself. When you talk about Alphans and Planet Y and so on, is, have you yeah. ever had that curiosity? Like you know, I just would like to come up with something <laughs> very different or i think uh, magma did it eh? uh, yeah french french band magma they had their own uh, language i think there are more uh, I, I like the english language too much yeah i like uh, there are we were talking about singers early uh, a lot of the reasons that i like singers is because of their pronunciation right you know maybe i like john lennon because of the liverpool pronunciation that would not be there you know yeah, yeah. Uh, pronunciation for me is very important you know that's why i can't handle heavy accents unless they're really cute you know sometimes they're cute like with abba you know for sure it's just cute you know <laughs> it it, it kind of works but some accents i'm like oh no you know storms are blazing over barren land No, the zero ones is as far as I would go. I don't okay. think I would create a whole language. It, it yeah, would yeah. also, you know, it would take take a lot of work. Because if I do it, I would want it to be perfect. You know? Right. Yeah. Like yeah. people, like people study Klingon or something. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Kapla.
one yeah. thing that's for sure, at least, you know, you were very adamant about that. You'll never write a song in Dutch. I actually did for my mother oh, when she turned 70. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's here. I, I wrote it in Dutch and even performed it with the whole family. We're like the, uh. the, part, the Partridge family or the Brady Bunch or whatever. <laughs> and we sang, uh, we took uh, an old song of mine of actual fantasy, uh, Beyond the Last Horizon. Okay. And and it, uh, we turned, we made it, the, or I, we, I made a Dutch version called yeah. The Lovely Mother and uh, uh, je bent nog steeds een mooie vrouw. Je bent nog altijd druk in touwen, vol met leven. <laughs> terrible, wow. terrible. But but you know. But beautiful at the same time, and it must have been, <laughs> that must be quite an emotional moment for you. Like, does that also make um, that original song Beyond, Beyond the Horizon and, and 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 the actual fantasy even so mm -hmm. much more special for you then? If it because I, I know that you probably have an emotional tie to every song you've ever written. But, well, but it was a special album because uh, my father was dying at when I made Actual Fantasy. And actually that song is about my father. That's why I picked that song to make a, a Dutch version for my mother. You know, it was my father who was battling. His kidneys didn't work anymore. And, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's about this uh, man who's trying to beat it, but he can't and uh, mm -hmm. beyond the last horizon. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it, it, uh, it, it was already a special song for me because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's uh, thank you for sharing that. that, that yeah, I don't think really, I don't believe really I told anyone yet. <laughs> no, I think my brother knows about it, of course. And 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 I mentioned my father in in, mm -hmm. the, in the credits of the album. No, I don't think I ever told him. So there you go. <laughs> wow, well, thank you for sharing. I yeah. really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, is there to kind of stay on that line with like, you know, connections? Um, do you, uh, we talked about like, oh, sometimes you're surprised to see what songs fans gravitate towards. Yeah, um, yeah. Every song is important to you. On this new album, when you're writing songs, do you do you then feel like some bands will say like, oh, we wrote that song and from the get go, we knew it was a special song. And then others like Iron Maiden will say like, oh, with Number of the Beast, like, no, we didn't know that we were writing one of the greatest albums in the world. It was just after a while that we realized it was yeah, something special. Yeah. How is that for you? Do you sometimes go like, this one's special, this song yeah. or album? Yeah, some songs I feel like, oh, this is gonna work. Yeah. And some some songs I really have to work on it and change it and stuff like that. But like a song of, like Fate of Man, which Britney sang, you know? Yeah. I had the I had the chorus in my head and it was just like, hey, this is catchy. And then my immediate thought is I must have stolen it. You know, that's yeah. Mike Mike Mills says the same thing. Every time he has something that's really catchy and he thinks like, oh, that's cool. It must exist somewhere, you know. Right. Every every song's been sung before, every note's been played. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's always the immediate fear. Time is a rhythm. But yeah, some songs like like if I have a certain riff, like like Donald Main Souls, or or Into the Black Hole, or, or, or yeah, uh, uh, yeah I, I feel that it's special. And other songs, I'm thinking like, oh, I hope that people will like it. I'm not sure about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it it's I'm not always right, you know. Sometimes right. I'm like, really, everyone loves this. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah, expect yeah, yeah. that. If I knew, I would be writing those songs that people want to hear you know but of course if i see like loser is, is number one that uh, been listened to i don't know millions of times and i would write another loser that would not work at all of know? course of course yeah, it, yeah it, it it's, it's a work. unique song also with the didgeridoo and the flute and the... <laughs> right yeah. yeah but it's tempting it's tempting you know to yeah. okay it's successful let's write another song and, and History is full of it, of course, you know, where bands uh, are successful with the track and they try to do it again and it never works. Never you know? works. It's like with movies, like movies, yeah. like Jaws number two or Jaws okay, number six. Okay, so that's six. actually a question I but wanted to matter. ask you. That's actually a question I wanted to ask you because we talked about, you know, being influenced in music and potentially, you know, copying, even covering or be being very clearly influenced about movies. You know, I know that you're a big movie fan um the, the star one albums are the perfect you know example of that um revel in your time blade runner um mm -hmm. so 
when when 30 years later sequels are made or you know in the case of Blade Runner it was it was a sequel um mm. but in a lot of cases you know it seems like every movie that's coming out right now is you know a recycled story that we've seen before right, right. um whether it's a reboot a sequel a prequel a spin-off whatever what's that as a, as a fan like are you some is is that predominantly negative for you or or are you excited yeah. as a fan that newer stories come no out? not even not yeah. even excited i've given that up yeah. you know there's so many things i was looking for like like oh there's a new james bond movie now i don't know if you saw it but it's the first bond movie where i gave up oh wow. you know, i mean where are the cool tricks where are the cool one-liners and you know he's he's supposed to well let's not get into that but yeah, yeah no uh, sure. and, and even the blade runner you know uh everyone loves it the sequel and i went to the cinema it was a disappointment and i was like can't be it looks beautiful everything yeah, yeah, is yeah. good about it so i went again and again i was like yeah and i don't know if it's because i like the original so much or uh you know there, there's no good Hauer, of course in, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, sequel. Yeah, yeah. but yeah it's a really good movie but but um yeah this brings no. us back this brings us back to the beginning of the conversation we we're talking about you know a, a soulful singer over uh, a, a technical singer any day i yeah, guess uh, yeah. the soul of, of a movie over it doesn't matter how much budget you have for CGI. yeah it's 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 yeah it's character development you know i want to yeah. see that that's what i see in, in the original blade runner you know and, and harrison ford and then yeah, yeah, yeah you know what is he thinking and, and and there's no character development in a lot of the movies i see now you know there's yeah. like you say there's a lot of put a lot of money in effects and it looks amazing you know but uh, really it's all about the characters for right me. Obviously, I hope that you will, when the time is right uh, with with COVID, um, that that um, and you have the, the possibility to, to set up new additional shows and and Aryan weekends or Lucas and weekends that would be phenomenal. I don't know if there's anything to share on that front. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it was becoming a two year thing, you know, fifteen the theater equation, seventeen the universe, nineteen the electric castle. So obviously. 21 we booked uh, the same venue again for the for the whole week of course we couldn't do it so we moved it to 2022 hoping that it would be better it's not it's worse so now we moved it again to 2023 september um having said that you know it would have to be solved by the end of this year because yeah. it takes us a year to set it up you know, and this is too big a project to set it up and then, hey, it's canceled. Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't risk that financially and yeah, yeah, put, sure. putting too much time in it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's um, scheduled for, for September 2023. And it, uh, it would be uh, uh, an Arion album that we would do. So, oh, OK. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, awesome. We'll keep our eyes open for that, uh, Arion. Um, uh, we're running out of time sh quickly here. So I, I just want to say thank you so much for your time, for all the work. Always I'm a pleasure, man. Always. I'm, pleasure. I'm super excited about the new album coming out. Um, cool. cool. Uh, you and have I a know favorite that, track? I, uh, I mean, I'm biased. I like Britney singing. Okay. Okay. A lot. It's, <laughs> it's, I think it's Good really choice. cool. I think it's a, I think it's a great one. Um, it's, um, I know that you're probably telling people that right now, oh, my tank is empty and I don't have any inspiration after I know, that. yeah. But it's I know just... that in a year from now, you'll have a new album out with something amazing. Let's hope we'll be talking here again and I'll be like, this is the best album I made. But, you know. Exactly, exactly. Right awesome. now, uh, it's it's the black hole period as always. But Well, we know from your albums that you come out of a black hole through the wormhole and that you find <laughs> out uh, of the white hole <laughs> exactly exactly a new migrator spirit to follow to the next yep. project <laughs> awesome well i didn't thank you so much i really appreciate it and uh i can't wait uh, uh for those shows in 2023 to happen cool and cool. be there i hope so i hope awesome. so you are awesome for watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel